All right, this is a tutorial for how to access Google Calendar. And I'm going to do five things. First of all, where is it? How do you get there? Secondly, how do you set up an appointment? Thirdly, how do you invite others to an appointment? Fourth, how do you add the GBS calendar to your personal calendar? And fifth, how do you turn calendars on and off within Google Calendar? So the first thing you want to do is go to your email account, because almost everybody keeps their email account up. You log in to your email account. And at the top of your screen, you will see a little icon that's got nine grayish squares. So if you click on this icon that has the nine grayish squares, uh, the calendar item looks like 31 with blue folded corner at the bottom right. Click on that, and it automatically opens you up to your God's Bible School and College calendar. And just to walk you through the basic options, up at the top here, you have a day view, a week view, a month view, a four-day view, an agenda view, which lists your appointments as though you were looking at an agenda, and then additional options of printing and refreshing. Okay. The current date being displayed is at the top of the screen here. You can use the left and right arrows to move. If you have it on a month view, it's just the month being displayed and you can move between months there. If you get somewhere and you don't want to have to click multiple times back, you just click the Today button and it takes you back to the current date. Okay, out on the left side, you see a monthly calendar that will also allow you to uh, click forward or backwards. And uh, if you want to get rid of it, you can click the down arrow to its left and minimize it. The calendars that you have created are listed here under the section entitled My Calendars. So I've created a calendar. My wife has also, I've also created one for my wife, and we share that calendar. Then other calendars I've had shared with me Ellen Browns, the music divisions, holidays in the United States, IT administrator, and ministerial education. And I can turn these on or off by clicking on the color beside the name. And uh, so if I want to not see GBS Music Division, it's now off. Click it again, it's now on. And of course, the color beside the name is also reflected on the calendar colors themselves. So that my particular events are in green. IT Administrator for GBS is in red. Ministerial Education is in orange. So that's how to find and do basic navigation around the calendar. Now, I'm going to add to my schedule, uh, to my calendar, my teaching schedule so that I can uh, know when I'm supposed to be where I'm supposed to be. So on Monday, starting August the 25th, from 8 uh, 50 to 9 45 I have advanced homiletics so what I did was I clicked in the slot starting the closest 830 which is the closest to 850 I can get how do you get that I, I, I clicked and dragged into 830 it's automatic you are on a month view now I'm on the week view 
the week view or the day view, but week view is the easiest. Okay, by clicking on the 8.30 slot and dragging down to 9.30, I automatically get an appointment event that shows up. And it tells me it's already scheduled for Monday, August 25th, 8.30 a.m. to 9.30. I'm going to type in advanced home. And if that was the exact time, that was all I would have to do. Hit enter and the appointment would be set. Okay, but it's not the right time, so I need to edit the event. So I come down to the bottom of the little pop-up, click Edit Event, and underneath the title of the event, I have access to editing it. I'm going to change from 8.30 to 8.50, and when I do that, notice and, and hit the Tab key, notice that the 9.30 will automatically change to 9.50. That is, it assumes, since you started with an hour, that you want an hour. So I'll have to change that myself to 940. Okay. If that was all the changes I wanted to do, I would just click the Save button, and it would be saved. You do have to click Save in order for changes to be saved. However, this class meets Monday, Wednesday, Friday. And so I want it to show up on my calendar every Monday, Wednesday, Friday. So I'm going to click the repeat checkbox that is right beside this underneath the time. Anybody see that? This repeat checkbox opens up a dialog that allows me to choose how often I want this to repeat. I'm going to set this up to be weekly. It's going to happen on Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. So I click the M, the checkbox by the M for Monday, the checkbox by the W for Wednesday, and the checkbox by the F for Friday. And this is going to end at the end of the semester, which I'm just guessing is around December the 16th. Okay. So I'm going to say December, in fact, it's actually the 12th. I remember that's the last day of class, December the 12th, uh, of actual class. There's a final exam after that. And by doing that, it will show up every Monday, Wednesday, Friday from August the 25th to December the 12th. Hit Enter and say Done at the bottom. Done, and then Save. Now you will see that Advanced Homiletics has been added to my schedule on Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. Now you're back at what view? I'm back at the standard calendar view. I'm looking at the week view. Okay, so let's say that some, let's say that due to um, revival schedule, I won't actually have advanced homiletics on Friday. I'll only have it on Wednesday of this first week. So I come over to my Friday advanced homiletics, uh, click on it. Left or right? right? Regular left click, left click. And delete is one of the options on the, uh, the front screen that comes up. And when I click delete, it will ask me, do I want to delete only this instance, uh, all following, or all events? Well, I want only this instance, so I click that, and now that's gone. So it's much better to add them all at once and then go back through and select a few to delete than add them one day at a time. <laughs> all right, now, this week on Wednesday, I have a tag meeting from 3 to 5 p.m. scheduled. Okay, So I'm going to show you now how to add people to, invite people to a meeting or an event. So I've created, I've created the, uh, the appointment, and I've got the time set. It's not a repeating event. I'm not going to change any of this stuff. Although, let me just show you down here. Uh, there's two kinds of reminders possible for an event. 
So if you look down at the bottom left corner of the screen, it, the default is a pop-up at 15 minutes prior to the event. And that pop-up only comes up on your screen if you actually have Google Calendar up for the pop-up to come up, which I often don't have the calendar up, therefore I don't get the pop-up. So I choose instead an email that will show up in my email, which I always keep open, and it will then, four hours before this meeting, I will be reminded that I'm supposed to be somewhere. And you can set up multiple email reminders. So like for my anniversary, I set up an email to remind me a week before my anniversary, three days before my anniversary, the day of my anniversary. <laughs> <laughs> so you always have your this up for the monthly view? That was the weekly view that I was in. The weekly view, you always you leave your weekly view up? That is my preferred view. But it's a function of personal preference. And you, you, when you do have that email set to make a noise? It comes into my inbox. It just shows up in your email inbox. Okay, you, have, you don't have your calendar up. It has nothing to do with the calendar. The program actually sends you an email. Okay, and you, then you does it take your email beep? No. I don't know any way to have email beep at you. So you just there may, there may be some kind of an app. Is there, there is a way you can see how that station? Yeah, exactly. So you leave this screen up all day long. As soon as yeah, as my, yeah, my email is always open. I never close it. But if you have something else on top of it. Well, one of the things that Google has done is they have put in the tab a parentheses number that indicates the number of emails you have that you have not opened. So if you glance and you see a number in parentheses, you know that you have emails that you have not opened. Okay. All right, so let me just show you how to add a person. Uh, so I've clicked on the event itself and chose Edit. And on the right-hand side of the screen, there's an Add Guests option. Right -click. Have you found this? There's no right-clicking at all. It's all left-clicking. Okay, so once again, I clicked on the event on my calendar tag. I chose Edit Event. Uh, I don't have that option. Yes, you do. Any, any event that you have created, oh. you have I mean, to have already created it. I can't mess with it. If you're not the owner of the calendar, you can't. Edit no, you it. can't edit other people's calendars. Uh, yeah. That's a good point. Yeah. So what happened here? So after clicking and choosing Edit Event, on the right-hand side of the screen is an Add Guests option. I'm going to add Nick Pope because he's on tag. I'm going to add um, Steve Harms. I'm going to add Brad. Bishop, I'm going to add. Um, if you watch the screen, and don't look at yours, you'll see I'm adding Josh Avery. And as soon as I click it, it's automatically added below. Now, one of the nice things is if we all have our calendars filled out so that the appointments we have are present on our calendar. Then if we click this find a time link, it will show all of the people who have allowed their calendar to be seen and made it visible. And I can see whether in fact they are busy during that time, which is the beauty of a shared calendar is I don't have to I don't create an event that I already know ahead of time they're not going to be able to come to. Okay. So that find the time allows you to dis discern whether they'll be available. I've added the people that I want to add. Let's see, I think also uh, Ryan Waters is on the committee. Look, Ryan Waters shows up as having an event already scheduled from 4.30 to 6.30 p.m. that will take him away from the last quarter of the meeting. You notice that he can't see what the event is. He can just see who's busy. I can just see that he's busy. Everything's labeled as busy. 
for anybody else. They don't know what it is. Even though you have your stuff written down, it doesn't. Yes, my personal information is only visible to me. Everybody else just sees it as business. I'm probably worried about it. Yeah, yeah. no. He doesn't know if Ryan's not taking his wife or if he's right. meeting with Mr. Miles. Or it's just his way of getting out of the office and, and disappearing. <laughs> this is busy time. I'm busy. <laughs> okay, so if he said personal time record, you would Wouldn't matter. Okay. Yeah. Okay, so now that I've added those guests, I'm going to come to the top of the screen and choose Save. When I choose save, I get an option. Do I want to send invitations to the event? I do because I want them all to reply whether they're coming or not. So I'm going to choose send. And now all of those persons have just received an email with this event on it asking them, are you going to come? Yes, no, reschedule. There are a bunch of options that show up. You don't have to write anything in the email. That's correct. Go ahead. If I answer yes, does that add to your calendar? Yes. When they add yes, it adds it to their calendar. And if I've set the event up to have an email reminder, then they will get an email reminder as well. Excellent. And if I have people who tend to forget to come, then I set it up with an email reminder, and then they're reminded. Okay, the last item here is how to add the GBS calendar to your calendar. So if you'll open a new tab and go to gbs.edu, you come to the GBS website. And at the very front of the website, on the left-hand side, right under the main links, is a link called Calendar, right where my mouse cursor is. And if you click on that calendar, it takes you to the GBS calendar. Now, scroll down until you see the little Google Calendar button toward the right corner, bottom corner of the calendar. If you will click that button, it automatically adds the calendars to your calendar. So it's asking me, do I want to add the Academy calendar and the Public Relations calendars, which were a part of that one GBS calendar. In my case, I'm going to say, no, I don't. And down at the bottom of my calendar, I now have the IT Administrator, which is the GBS calendar. A question was just asked, are any changes to the GBS calendar automatically reflected on our calendar? And the answer is yes. You're not just adding their events in a single transaction. All you're doing is creating a link so that your calendar reflects what's on their calendar. Any changes they make, you will see. Now, if you, if you had added all three things, the high school, the high school and you said, man, I didn't want that. How would you? Okay, if you get a calendar that you do not want, you can, for example, you, you put your cursor to the right of the calendar, click on the little down button, and choose hide this calendar from the list. Once you've hidden it from the list, it will no longer show up in this list. If you, don't, if you don't want to remove it, but you just don't want to see it, then you click on the colored box beside it, and that those items no longer show up on your calendar.